My mother and sister-in-law did all the work and planning and she did nothing to help. The only thing she was concerned about were people's clothing colors and choices. She went on full Bridezilla rant about how I was being ungrateful. All right guys, welcome back to another episode of For Better or Worse, where I read your wedding event or crazy just life stories. I get so many sent to me from all kinds of people and so I've been blind reacting to different ones that I get. A lot of fun. But before I get to today's stories, which I actually have two for you today, I have some updates in case you haven't been around or missed a couple of videos. Ferris and Sloan, the beloved Ferris and Sloan, season two has just ended. I posted the finale earlier this week, which by the time you see this video, it'll be last week. Lots of love for season two and lots of pressure on myself. I think I put a lot of pressure being like, oh my gosh, it has to go even better and even better, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm getting a lot of questions and I will be answering some of the questions that I'm seeing a lot of. But one thing I always enjoy about TV series is that it has an ending, but there's always some kind of open end it or I think it's good to have a solid ending. However, I always like when there's some unanswered questions that are left to your own interpretation. So whatever you think or whatever you took away from the episode, hey, that's your interpretation. So I think you should go with it. I'm getting lots of questions if I'm going to continue and do a season three. And to be completely honest with you, I have not thought that all the way through or committed to it yet. I know people are saying like, you have to do a season three because you didn't say series finale. You only said season finale, which that's very true, touche. But I just really wanted a solid ending of season two before I could commit or say anything about season three. The wheels are turning. So I do have some ideas for you. To go along with that, in case you missed it, I do have my merch line that's tied to the Ferris and Sloan story because so many people asked about it and love it. So check it out the link below. There's t-shirts, v-necks, long sleeves, hoodies, stickers, mugs, and I am working on some new merch as well. So check it out while it's up because I'm not gonna keep Sloan stuff always the same. I might mix it up from time to time. So that all being said, I do have some new and exciting projects coming up. Some are tied directly to the Ferris and Sloan storyline and some are tied more to the overall party planning by Krista, sharing your stories kind of thing without saying too much. So lots coming in the next couple of months, especially as the new year approaches. So if you would like to be in the know and get an insider scoop, we just created a newsletter sign up. So if you sign up with the link below, you're gonna be getting regular emails that are fun reads, but most importantly, insider scoop, more drama, more behind the scenes, and maybe most importantly, the first to see upcoming projects coming very soon. And you might get to give your own voice and opinion to what those projects are and how we do them. So if you wanna be a part of that, sign up with the link below. And I know I'm babbling and talking a lot. So let's just get into these stories and just, I'm very excited and thank you all for the support of Ferris and Sloan. All right, here we go. I got two stories for you guys this week because they didn't look super long, but long enough. And uh, they, they caught my eye as I was reading through. Okay, first one's first. My sister-in-law just recently got married and shortly after she was engaged, she asked me to be a bridesmaid. Of course, I said yes. A few weeks later, my mother-in-law told me and my husband that she decided to not have me be one anymore. Weird. Her fiance only had three or four groomsmen and she wanted it to be even. Don't you think you would think about that before asking people? Like that's kind of rude in my opinion, but okay. I was then told that she wanted family to wear either peach pink or a dusty blue color. Dresses are expensive and we were really tight on money, so I was planning on borrowing a pink dress from a friend. A week and a half before we have to start traveling for her wedding, she called my husband and asked if I had a blue dress because she wants me to be a bridesmaid again. What is with this back and forth? Like people have to also understand you can't just at the drop of the hat, just find a dress or spend money for it. You're tight on money. So that's asking a lot of people already. I didn't have a dress and I had to buy and alter it in a week and a half. So by the sounds of that sentence, it sounds like she rushed out, got a dress and quickly altered it. I think I would have told someone, no, like you're giving me a week and a half before I have to leave. She doesn't say how far she's traveling, but to say travel, I'm guessing out of state, whether that's a long drive, a plane ride, that's a lot. We get to my in-laws to help with any setup or preparations and she only came over one time about two hours before while we were making floral arrangements. Oh my gosh. So she only came to check in one time while you guys are like doing a lot of the work and decorations for the wedding. 
She just sat there watching, not helping at all. We asked how many bouquets we needed for the bridesmaids and she turned to me and says, you're gonna be one, right? And I just said, am I? The mother-in-law is talking to her daughter and says, well, we weren't sure because you've been changing your mind and then unasked her. The bride then turns to her mom and says, I didn't unask her, you did. Awkward. I will say I know my mother-in-law and she is not one to do or say anything unless she's 100% certain. The only reason she told me was because the bride never did. So the bride's going back and forth and then told the mom, so then the mom is the one that unasked her. That's a lot of confusion. I'd be like, it's your wedding. You do the asking and unasking. The bride then goes over to her bridesmaids and says she has eight and there are still only four groomsmen. So what happened to it wanting to be equal? Now we have twice as many bridesmaids as groomsmen. She made all this drama about wanting everyone to wear the same dress and then decided last minute to have them pick their own. She didn't want any floral ties for the groom or groomsmen and ended up having her fiance wear one. Oh, so in the beginning she didn't want any florals, but then she wanted her fiance also have one. And got frustrated that my brother-in-law ended up with the same tie as the groom. He specifically bought that tie because it matched the colors she wanted and he wasn't a groomsman, so he assumed he wouldn't look the same. So it's not his fault that they changed their wedding colors multiple times. My mother and sister-in-law did all the work and planning and she did nothing to help. The only thing she was concerned about were people's clothing colors and choices. Yeesh, oh, I got a lot to say. Here's the thing. If you are a very organized bride and you know what you want, that is totally fine. You know what, some people picture this day since they were a little girl, little boy, whatever. But here's the problem I have. When you want all these things, but you're not willing to help or you're constantly changing your mind at the will of other people. So if you know what you want and you're there to help and you're there to direct and you're there to be organized, that's amazing, like more power to you. But if you're like, no, don't do that, do that. Oh wait, I changed my mind, do that. Then you're just causing more problems for everybody else. So that's where it becomes a little bridezilla e of where you want this amazing day, but you're unwilling to lift a finger yourself. So this just sounds like a lot of like communication issues. And I'm not saying with the, the persons that sent in the story, I'm saying with the bride. She wanted all these things, but then she was changing her mind. But then when she was changing her mind, she didn't want anyone to know about it. It just sounds very chaotic. We don't have the full story there. It sounds like she wasn't willing to help, but I don't have any, any more details about the wedding day. So if you are the bridesmaid that sent that story in and you want some more details, please do. I need to do like a follow-up episode because when I do go through these wedding submission stories, I see some that are like, hey, you've been using my story for this. I want to give you updates and I never have time to go through those. So maybe I need to do like a revisit story. You know, like those TV shows where they're like, oh, where are they now? Like we can do something like that. And if they're a skit, I got to go back and react them out or something. All right, guys, story number two. I've not read this one at all, but the start of it sounds very chaotic. All right, here we go. I'm the youngest of three girls and we're all two years apart from each other. My oldest sister is four years older than me and we absolutely did not get along while growing up. She was my bully at home and even with my mom intervening, it was never let up. Fast forward to her wedding planning. I was in college at the time when her and her boyfriend announced that they were getting married, which was no surprise since he was the father of her child. However, I was surprised when I was asked to be a bridesmaid. Our relationship by then was a little better since she and I were no longer living in the same household, but I was still taken aback. I accepted the offer. Come to find out, my mom encouraged her to make both my other sister and me a bridesmaid. Mom meant well, but it suddenly became clear I was not truly welcomed as a bridesmaid. And we've talked about this before here. Believe it or not, this happens a lot. Parents want all their kids in the wedding together and if they don't get along, they're like, you're gonna regret this, but it's more of the parent putting their own pressure. You truly want people in your wedding that are gonna be there and support you and you feel comfortable with. You don't want someone there just because your parents told you, right? You wouldn't have just some old friend that you don't really talk too much anymore. So just because someone is a sibling, you shouldn't have to have them in your wedding. I get that can be a lot for parents to understand and it can be very challenging to like be a part of a wedding day and see that one sibling's not in it. So I can only imagine how difficult that would be as a parent to be like, oh gosh, like they're not close anymore. You know, you wanna encourage them to get along and all that. But ultimately we have to remember it's the bride and groom's day. So who they want in it should be in it because otherwise it might be a little awkward like this is about to say. 
she had picked out a strapless sweetheart neckline bridesmaid dress that was a good color and affordable. It also had some built-in features that we could utilize if we wanted to change it up a little better to suit our own personal style and body types. It was a good option and everyone loved it. To be clear, I did really like the dress, but I was having some issues with the top half since I was rocking a double A cup. More alterations had to be done to my dress than others because of this. Even when I did my fitting with a push-up bra. I suffer from body dysmorphia, so I was extremely self-conscious about how the dress would fit. That's really challenging when there's so many different body types and you want the same dress for everybody. I personally love when a bride maybe has like a color for everybody, a color scheme for everybody, and then they can pick a style that matches best to their body type. Because even if everyone has the same body type, we're all comfortable in different kinds of things. Some like more fitted, some like loose, some don't like to show their shoulders, some do, you know, we're all different in that way. And so I think it's really important to kind of lean into like, what do my bridesmaids feel comfortable in? because they have to rock this dress. They have to wear it all day. How can I help them out? A couple weeks passed after we received the dresses back from alterations. We were all talking about the wedding at my mom's house and the conversation was light and playful. My mom brought up the dresses and I mentioned that I was still having a hard time getting it to fit right. This had set off my sister, the bride. She went on full bridezilla rant about how I was being ungrateful. Oh my gosh, so she's not even allowed to say the dress doesn't fit, right? How I was the only one who had a problem with the dress and that I was stuck on it. The rant was a lot worse than I could even include because it included several nasty names and comments, but that's the shortened version. So just because she said she was having a hard time having it fit right, plus something like a strapless dress, it can be a little more uncomfortable for most people. I know I personally don't like strapless because you're constantly pulling it up and someone that's double A is gonna have a very challenging time. I've even heard some seamstress talk about how certain alterations are very challenging with types of dresses. So if she's very small up top, it might be very hard to get those measurements fitting correctly. I spent the entire rest of the night in my childhood bedroom alone. I told my mom I did not want to be a bridesmaid anymore. My mom told me my sister was just frustrated from all the wedding planning and I shouldn't take it to heart. I agreed to continue being a bridesmaid, but I never got an apology and she just acted like she did nothing wrong. Yikes. It's been almost 10 years since her wedding and our relationship has healed a lot, but I often look back at that moment and still it hurts. That's very hard because I can totally sympathize with being stressed. Like, you know, there's a lot of things going on, a lot you have to do as a bride, but to lash out at your bridesmaid and sister for just saying the dress didn't fit her right is completely wrong. And it's hard. It sounds like there was already a lot of tension between the sisters. So if she already didn't want her to be a bridesmaid and the mom made her, she might have some issues with that. And so having a comment from her sister, it's just like triggered something. I'm sorry you dealt with that. And I'm glad there's been a lot of healing over the last 10 years sister relationships can be hard and you know i'm sure there's a lot more healing to come so that can be very challenging and i know i give a lot of tips during this for people watching with cautionary tales but at the end of the day you don't really know how things are going to run through like i said sometimes dress issues come up sometimes last minute things come up so it's appropriate just to listen hear them out and problem solve the best you can as the bride, groom, bridesmaid, what have you, whatever your part is in the wedding. All right, guys, thanks for sharing those awesome wedding stories. If you guys want to submit your own wedding story or event story, people are sending me all kinds of stories now, so it doesn't necessarily have to fit in wedding event planning. It could be a wide range. I'll accept it. We are definitely looking for more submissions because of other stuff coming up too. All right, guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me this week, and I will see you next week for another video. Bye.